Welcome. This is the Maine Department of Education Type 1 Diabetes Care in Schools State Specific Curriculum. This State of Maine centered content is part of a larger National Association of School Nurses project funded by the Leona M. and Harry B. Helmsley Charitable Trust. The project objectives are to create a comprehensive evidence based school nurse type 1 diabetes curriculum and a model for integrating state specific considerations. Two, to identify the impact of type 1 diabetes on student health and academic outcomes through active surveillance and collection of standardized data points related to student health and academic outcomes. And third, to increase the school nurse capacity to provide evidence-based interventions and data collection for students with type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is one of the most common chronic childhood conditions. It is an autoimmune disorder that destroys the insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas, which then requires the daily administration of insulin to survive, even though insulin is also a drug that can be very dangerous if not properly, properly dosed. There is currently no cure for type 1 diabetes, and for the 304,000 people under the age of 20, in the US living with type 1 diabetes, their condition and symptoms must be managed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For the 576 main students with type 1 diabetes, that means coordination and collaboration amongst members of the school health team, the student's family, and the student's personal health care are so important. We are providing the state of Maine type 1 care into school learning module because although clinical information and practices may be based on the same standards, there are local differences in policies, resources, and clinic or school procedures that matter when creating a foundation that empowers school nurses to support students with diabetes in their schools. This is a basic outline of what will be covered in the next few minutes. As school nurses consider the steps needed in meeting the health needs of students with diabetes or any chronic condition, it is important to remember a few key pieces to your role. First of all, remember that you do not have to know everything, but you do have to know your resources. The school nurse will provide or coordinate any training for school staff that is required. Make sure that the student's medical plan or diabetes roadmap is up to date and clear and then create the individual health plan and emergency action plan specific to each student. The scope and standards of practice for school nursing direct and lead school nursing practice. School nurses are required to have specialized knowledge, skills and decision-making and follow standards of practice. Following the standards of practice are required to provide the best possible nursing care with the best possible outcomes. The standards of practice and the related practice components are vital and overarching for the other principles of the framework for school nursing practice. Twenty first century school nursing practice outlines student centered nursing care that occurs within the context of the student's family and school community. Surrounding the students, family, and school community are the non-hierarchical overlapping key principles of care coordination, leadership, quality improvement, and community and public health. These principles are surrounded by the fifth principle, which is the standards of practice, which as we said, is the foundation for, for evidence-based, clinically competent quality care. In addition to the scope and standards of practice and the school nursing practice framework, nurses are guided by both the American Nurses Association, the ANA Code of Ethics, and the National Association of School Nurses Code of Ethics. If you're not familiar with the content of these codes, I encourage you to take some time to review and reflect on how you incorporate ethical decision-making in your practice. Federal laws mandate that all students attending public schools have access to health care during the school day and during extracurricular activities if it's required for full participation. 
Other federal laws are in place to ensure students with disabilities are provided with the appropriate support and accommodations and that their privacy is protected. This presentation is not intended to provide you a deep provide a deep dive into any of these laws as you could spend a whole day on each one. But it is important for school nurses to have an understanding of where some of the requirements come from. Remember that we are providing this state of Maine type 1 diabetes care in schools learning module because although clinical information and practices may be based on the same standards, there are local differences in policies, resources, and clinic and school procedures. These differences create unique challenges and opportunities that we do need to be aware of. We're going to cover briefly some main specific laws and regulations as well as resources so that you will be ready to provide evidence-based care to your students. As an example, the American Diabetes Association Safe at School program provides state-specific information and we've also included here the link for the main Department of Education Diabetes Management and Resource Guide. Diabetes care is just one part of a school health program. It is affected by the resources that exist. School health leaders such as school nurses, district lead nurses, school health advisors. And it's also affected by laws that are passed within the state and subsequent rules and regulations from the Maine Department of Education, such as the recent legislation that passed in 2024, which allows schools to stock undesignated emergency glucagon. In Maine law, you can find what is commonly referred to as the Nurse Practice Act within Maine Revised Statutes Title 32. Every registered nurse should be confident in their understanding of the scope, scope of practice that is outlined in law. Maine State Board of Nursing has regulations and they are currently in the rulemaking process as directed by Public Law 2024, Chapter 592, which was effective as of August 9th, 2024. It directed the Board of Nursing to replace the previous Chapter 6 regulations relating to coordination and oversight of patient care services by un for unlicensed personnel, and the new rule will allow for nurses to delegate to unlicensed assisted personnel in addition to CNAs and LPNs. As of October 2024, this, pro this is still in process, and we will update school nurses with information as we receive it from the Maine State Board of Nursing. The Maine Department of Education also adopts rules as directed by the Maine Legislature. Chapter 40 is the rule for medication administration in Maine schools. It does address some of diabetes care specifically. As we said, Chapter 40 is where you will find the main regulations for medication administration in school. Within this regulation, you also find the requirements for students to self-carry their medications or medical supplies. And with that, a student needs to have written approval from their healthcare provider. Um, they have to have a care plan that is associated with their, with their diagnosis. So a care plan for their type one diabetes and possibly a um, emergency action plan. The school nurse should also make sure that the student understands their responsibility in self-carrying supplies and pro proper use of all of their supplies and, and medications. Um, the school nurse should take into to account a student's ability to understand their diagnosis and appreciate the importance of taking their medication and treating it res with respect and responsibility. Reporting associated with Chapter 40 is implemented through the School Health Annual Report, which is completed yearly. In this report, the schools also report the number of students with specific chronic conditions, and related to this, it's diabetes. So is it even required in Maine for a school to have a school nurse? Well, in Maine, according to law, every school nurse is not required in every single school but every single school administrative unit, or sometimes called district, is required to have a school nurse. That means that that needs to be contracted. It doesn't specify that they have to be full-time. Um, 
we can say that with the school health annual report in 2024, there was a reported 425.15 full-time equivalent registered nurses. And we can compare that to the main DOE staffing report that school districts report to through staffing. And according to that, there are 426.7 FTE. So they're pretty close. Requirements for school nursing is different in almost every state. So requirements in the state of Maine are listed here and you must have a, be a registered nurse with a bachelor's degree and have at least three years of experience. We also want um, college credits in diversity centered content. And I would point out that this, this diversity content is not just a requirement for school nurses, but for every main department of education credential, teachers and counselors and the like. How do students access their insulin and treatment plans when there's not a nurse at school? As we said, not every school has a registered nurse. Well, according to the Nurse Practice Act in Maine, registered nurses can delegate to LPNs and to CNAs. There is a new law that was just passed in this, this year, 2024, that will change the delegation rules in, in the state of Maine where nurses can delegate to unlicensed assistive personnel as well. This, pro this rule and regulation is still in process, so we do not have specific details on that at this point. Um, just want to note that one of the barriers for when nurses are not present, though, is finding willing staff to be trained. So those unlicensed staff, the teachers or teachers or secretary or whoever it is that is going to be a designated person to to provide care when the nurse is not present, they need to be willing to be trained. And sometimes that is, is a hardship. Now school orders. So one of the duties of the school nurse is to make sure that you have up-to-date orders for diabetes care. And they may vary by the clinic you use or the, or the provider that they see. Um, the American Diabetes Association does have a diabetes medical management plan example. We've also included an, an example from Barbara Bush Children's Hospital, who is the provider of many students in Maine for their diabetes management. Now, glucagon, the undesignated ready to use glucagon is allowable in Maine schools um, to be stocked. Now, undesignated glucagon means that it is there if a student with a known diabetes diagnosis does not have their own supply of glucagon available on site, or maybe it has expired. If a school chooses to stock this glucagon, you do have to have a written standing order, and that would be from your school health advisor. It needs to be stored in a secure location and immediately accessible to the school nurse or the trained unlicensed staff. It needs to be maintained and stored according to directions. And remember that it has to be stored and administered in accordance with the local policy as well. Some of the barriers associated with stocking glucagon in our schools is the cost and also locating pharmacies that are able to dispense that to a school because it depends on pharmacy licensing, whether or not a pharmacy can dispense to a, an organization rather than an individual. To highlight some of the key resources in Maine, we just wanted to pull, pull together all of the different partners that we work with. The Maine Department of Education, the School Nurse Consultant, and the Coordinated School Health Team are probably the first people you, school nurses would go to. The Maine Association of School Nurses is a wonderful resource for your colleagues to give support to each other. The Maine Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Diabetes Prevention Program, your own school health advisor, as well as pediatric endocrinology clinics. Over the next few slides, we'll just show you some of the, some of the team that is associated with Maine DOE.
As we stated before, every school district is required to have a school health advisor, and this appointment is on a yearly basis. The school health advisor needs to be a physician, a licensed physician in the state of Maine or a nurse practitioner, and really is important to have that relationship with, with the school nurses within the district to act as an, as an advisor and to be able to sign standing orders as well as meet with the nurses on a regular basis to talk about challenging situations. Wanted to highlight the pediatric endocrinology clinics in Maine. We only have two at this time that, uh, that we are aware of, and those are through Maine Health and Northern Light Health. Um, generally, people in the southern part of the state will be covered by Maine Health through Barbara Bush Children's Hospital, and Northern Maine would be from, from Northern Light, and that's out of the Bangor Eastern Maine Medical Center offices. Obviously, a barrier to care here in the state of Maine is that we have only two endocrinology clinics, and it can be a 45-minute drive for, for many students and families, and ha they have limited options. So where can you get more information or education? Here are some helpful resources for you. We will make these slides available for you so that you can have all of the links accessible. Thank you so much for all of the school nurses in the state of Maine who support children with diabetes. And we also thank those that came together to give insight into this, this resource and that will keep this resource up to date.